Welcome everyone to our episode 82 of our section Drops of Wisdom. In today's episode, we are going to discuss the topic of evolution. What are what were the secrets of Darwin and how did he figure out all of these evolutionary changes that we uh, many times have in the species and how those those changes started to make in that time of course he didn't know about these things about the epigenetic marks and about how the environment was permeating in the genes but he was uh, an extremely good observer of these changes and he observed how the environment and the routines and many of the lifestyle that certain species have start impacting in the way they evolve, in the way they change, in many things that, of course, made the species stronger and more resilient to many of the adaptations that they had to suffer. And that's the wisdom of Darwin's secrets. That's the title of our episode, how to use Darwin secrets to change your genes, to start creating a legacy for future generations and how we can really impact the way we are remodeling our genetic imprint. So in a world that is constantly evolving, supposedly, to the better of the species, we have seen nowadays that many of the new generations are weaker and they are expressing many of the diseases that we never think of. And to have a child, for example, um, any of the gastrointestinal issues, we never listen to children having those kind of uh, diseases like 15 or 20 years ago. Nowadays, it's common for children to have many intestinal diseases and also diseases that were chronic for many adults now are being expressed more and more in children. And that's the evolution and that's the build up of these micro habits that they are having. So in a world that it's moving fast, we have to stay open minded and adaptable to many of this knowledge because this is the awareness that is going to create an impact. Darwin's insights remind us to embrace this new knowledge, new in brackets, new because it is now more um, advanced, the tools that we have to understand the impact that simple things have in our life. And now let it shape our habits and decisions. We can challenge our routines. We can seek new perspectives of doing the things and we can learn and grow with these new habits and become a different person than the one we were. And maybe, and most likely, we are going to be much healthier than when we were in our 20s. And now we are in our 40s or 50s. And that's the beauty of this science of epigenetics. Adapting, by adapting, we not only improve us, ourselves, but we also can inspire many people around us and we can create a really ripple effect on many other individuals that can just watch how we grow and watch how we evolve. So to discuss all of this, I'm going to give you five beautiful and powerful tips that are going to open your mind to change your life. Where do you want to be in this kind of picture? In health or in disease? In the circle that is uh, color yellow, we have all the chronic diseases and 
all of the impact that many of the habits, toxic habits have. So if you are not doing exercise or physical activity or movement, you will be in the yellow. If you are not having a good diet and you are having a processed diet, you are going to be in the yellow circle. If you are not sleeping well and you don't care about your sleep, you are going to be in the yellow. So you are going to accumulate many, many micro changes in your DNA or labels, or you are going to taint your DNA with these uh, chemical uh, groups that are uh, interfering with the reading of the sequence of many genes and you are producing defective proteins or dysfunctional proteins. And this, going, this is going to lead up to heart diseases, diabetes, many types of cancers, metabolic syndrome and rare diseases, which include, of course, autoimmune diseases. So it's your choice where you want to be I'm just narrating the information and giving you clues so that you choose the blue one. Because if you have a much better environment where you move, where, where you practice some physical activity, where you have also a um, way to regulate your stress and you are more conscious of your choices, then you create an environment that is healthier and you can be lean and you can be much healthier and live longer with good health, not just live longer with many of the chronic diseases. So that's the first key. Every choice we make from the diet to the stress manage management influences the biological systems, the signals, the messengers, the sequence, the immune system, the tissues, the organs at the cellular level, at tissue level, at organ level, and through epigenetics, they spread. And this field studies how these environment factors can alter gene function without changing the sequence of the DNA, because you are not changing anything in the DNA, you are just adding certain chemical uh, groups, which are methylation, which are acetylation, and we are going to see another one that is ubiquitination. All of these changes, I'm going to explain them, and they potentially, and we know now that they affect almost seven generations. So what did Darwin, um, what was the influence and the contribution of Darwin to habits and to the lifestyle choices that we can have? Well, he, uh, the work that he did on evolution highlighted significantly the role of the environment in shaping the species. He was such a good observer that he could notice that many of the species that evolve and become stronger and more resilient had certain traits that they acquire by repeating certain uh, habits in the behavior that they have. And the concept has evolved into understanding all of these micro layers, let's call them like that, that start to give birth to this science of genetics, which is all of those processes that impact and allow the reading, the clean reading of a gene, where all of the scientists explore how these habits, simple habits, free habits, and lifestyle choices impact your genes and clean all of these epigenetics marks and give you uh, much better health. So that is the influence of Darwin's um, science and Darwin, Darwin's um, discoveries. He saw the mechanisms of microevolution together with all the environmental changes, which were physical and biotic or biologic, and they were sufficient to amount to build up 
to contribute to a macro evolution that we could observe uh, in the passing of a few years. And that's how he discovered many of these um, early science, let's say, that on that time was not labeled as epigenetics. But that's the simplicity of the things and that's the simplicity of being a good observer of nature. So what can we do to impact our genes? Well, we have several periods in our lives to impact the health that we have. And as you can see here, there are many, many factors that are involved. And it's, of course, a complex process to have the detail of how each thing that is listed in this uh, diagram can impact your genes. But you can see that there are viruses, there are bacteria. There is, of course, the different kind of food that you are consuming, that you are consuming, sorry, the um, uh, acids, the, the fatty acids that you are consuming, if you are consuming omegas or not, if you are consuming uh, fruits and vegetables that have antioxidants, if you have food that also functions as a prebiotic, which are many of uh, the um, legumes that you can find and you can just eat them in your diet, such as beans, such as lentils, and many of the cereals also contribute to this uh, microbiota in your system. Of course, all of the green uh, vegetables contribute with many minerals and many uh, antioxidants and the exposure to allergens or pollutants, of course, is contributing to the inherited genotype. So all of this list of factors or variables it's going to have an impact on your genes. Now, what happens with this? All of that is going to be mixed. And then when you, if you are a woman, <laughs> you are going to have these effects in the baby in the utero. And you are going to change the effects and you are going to pass on certain genetic imprint. And also that imprint, those labels, those chemical groups are going to have an impact on the immunity of your baby. And those different changes at birth will be um, exposed to certain periods of epigenetic, uh, let's say, window. You have an epigenetic window where more changes are being uh, expressed and this is of course in early childhood where the uh, children for obvious reasons because they are growing and they are evolving inside in terms of the neural systems in terms of all the tissues in terms of all the immunity that they are developing they are going to change epigenetically also. That's why it is extremely important to have a different kind of activity, different kind of behaviors in your children so that they see you, that you are healthier, so that they copy the habits from you, so that they can have a good example, a good movie to write now his or her epigenetic uh, future. And they also have a period of um, a very strong window of epigenetic changes in adolescence. So if you create, if you nurture a human being, a baby, a boy or, or a girl that is copying the good habits from you, throughout his or her life, you are going to create a healthier human being, that it's not going to be difficult to acquire any kind of healthy habit because he already has it 
because they are really malleable in those stages and they are really novel and virgin to many of these changes to incorporate all of those things and to make them their own and to create a lifestyle that is going to give them real health and not dependency on any uh, pharmaceutical drug or whatever it is uh, hacking tool. So the environment can modify the gene activity, adding or removing chemical tax on your DNA. And those chemical tax will act as switches, let's say that turn on or turn off the genes. And more than turning on or, or off, what they do is that they um, they make it difficult to position the factors, the transcription factors that are going to be positioned in the DNA and read the sequence. So if they read another part that was not supposed to be read, they are going to express a dysfunctional gene. And if they express many times these dysfunctional genes, of course, you are going to be building up changes in your cells, and those changes are going to um, predispose you to express a disease. What types of changes are you going to have if you are irresponsible of the things that you are doing? Methylation is in the parental ancestral stage. So those are the all of the labels and tags and taints. All of these chemical groups of met methylation are happening in the parental ancestral environment. So that is before you have children. When you are getting closer to the stage of reproduction, you are going to have these prenatal changes, which are methylations and acetylations. And the environment that you are having when when you are going to have a baby, if you are a woman and you have healthier habits, you are going to create a much better environment for your child. And you are going to be able to erase. Look at this word. That's really, really powerful. You are going to have the ability to have epigenetic erasing of your irresponsibility if you are pregnant and you start changing your life during pregnancy, you have an opportunity to make your child much better. So do it, please. Help us evolve this species that is not going well right now. So let's make it better because we have the ability. And then when you are born and throughout your life, you have all these postnatal uh, labeling of your DNA that includes many of these uh, different marks. And among these marks, we have one that is ubiquitination or ubiquitia ubiquitation. Sorry for the mispronunciation, but it's not a, an easy word. So ubiquitination or ubiquitation what does is that labels many of these uh, sequences in the genes that be that can be recognized after they are translated and transcribed and they they are proteins and what they produce is many times they have apoptosis apoptosis signals is cellular death so they are labeling many of these sequences to be destroyed, to have an epigenetic writing. So now you are writing your story. When you are born, you are accumulating DNA labeling all the time. And I mentioned the periods that are extremely important. Early childhood from being born up to 
and let's say eight years old. And then in the adolescence from 12, 13 years to 18, 19 or 20 years, those big windows are the most important because if you are healthy during those windows, you will clean your DNA as much as possible, even from parental, ancestral, uh, chemical, DNA mm, tags, let's say. Let's call them marks or tags, whatever you want. So you have a lot of impact in your life. That's why we need routines throughout our life. And it doesn't really matter if you wasted 20, 30, or even 40 years of your life, you still have some time to have an impact for your future, for your 60s, for your 70s, if you ever want to be in that age, of course. And to be healthier, you can just incorporate these changes into your lifestyle and into your routine. And that's what creates many of these epigenetic cleaning or erasing or reversing of disease. And that's how people recover from uh, cardiovascular disease, some types of cancer, and they recover from diabetes and from neurodegenerative diseases. So all of these changes are counting. Establishing healthy routines can positively influence, of course, your gene expression because it cleans the DNA. Regular healthy habits, such as exercise, even though you listen to that word and you have some kind of reaction, let's call it movement, motion, so that you can be um, more empathic with that word. And having a balanced diet, just having a, a more conscious diet and not consuming so much processed food. All of those things help you in maintaining cellular genetic balance and function, which can be beneficial, of course, for you and for future generations. In spite of already having children, you are cleaning your history and you are cleaning the transference of these uh, labels in your DNA. We are evolving the species to something much better. What else? Stress and gene function. This is extremely important because we are living in times where pretty much, I, I would dare to say that 80% of the global population is under excessive stress and this excessive stress is uh, known in the scientific world as a uh, reactive oxygen species or ROS. This ROS creates a chain reaction and this chain reaction creates oxidative express that as this image is trying to show explodes and it's too much and it creates membrane membrane damage. And this damage that crosses the membrane of the cells starts creating oxidation in your fats, in your lipids. And this is start this creates a, another sequence or, or another cascade of events that creates an act antioxidant depletion. So you have a very poor uh, quality of antioxidants or you don't, you, don't, you don't even have antioxidants in your cells that protect you against this oxidative stress. So you start keep permeating layers and layers until you have oxidative damage. And that oxid oxidative damage is also going to uh, create DNA, DNA breaking or breakage. So these DNA breakings and this DNA labeling and this DNA tainting is going to create the 
poor reading. It's just like writing a book in a certain language and then giving it to your editor and your editor or your publishing company don't don't or doesn't sorry doesn't do anything to correct and he just published the book just as it is imagine just publishing a book that has so many mistakes still this is what happens in your dna if you don't have an editor if you don't have something that protects the quality of your dna you are going to have a very poor quality of proteins and this poor quality of proteins is the one that is uh, building up and when it is time it's going to be expressed in a disease and that's what causes necrosis of cells necrosis of tissues apoptosis which is the signals of death in many cells and this starts creating a ripple effect that produces any kind of the diseases that we mentioned at the beginning. So that's the impact of stress. And it is not about not having a stress. Of course, we need certain kind of stress, but it is not having chronic stress. That is the difference. And there is a big difference. If you are under chronic stress, you feel completely depleted of energy, completed, uh, complete uh, depletion of the clarity in your thoughts, complete depletion of the things and the consciousness that, that you have to consume information, to consume food, to, to do whatever you have to do for your body. So what are the recommendations? Because not everything is lost. Of course, we have a lot of responsibility and not a lot of ability to change many things. So as you can see here, healthy habits are going to be able to regress any kind of disease. And this is what we are observing here. A person that doesn't have physical activity and starts increasing eventually, step by step, his activity is going to have a, a much better uh, um, prognosis for her or his future in terms of developing certain kind of chronic diseases. As you can see here in the image that is the silhouette of, of any kind of person that is performing physical activity, he or she is reversing the risk to high risk of developing diabetes to moderate risk because it's cleaning the DNA. And if he continues under those healthier habits, he's, he is now on low risk of developing diabetes. So adopting healthier routines, regular physical activity, a balanced diet, an adequate sleep, a regulation of your stress positively, of course, influence your gene expression and your overall health, as you can see here. Managing your stress effectively, practice stress reduction, meditation, walking around nature, even if you don't live in a place that is close to, uh, to the woods or to any kind of natural scenery, you have trees around probably around your house and close to your house let's hope that you have something like that well walk around those places and try to practice uh, breathing techniques so that you can regulate your stress try to engage in things that you like even for 10 minutes or 15 minutes at the end of your day draw, listen to the music that you like, read, uh, watch something that gives you or nurtures your soul and minimize the negative impact of stressful things such as watching news, uh, engaging in politics, all of those things doesn't do anything for your genes. 
So start cleaning your genes with those things and you will have much better cellular health and promote a healthy environment. When you become a different person, when you evolve as a stronger species, as a stronger human being, as a more resilient human being, you start having or you want an encouraging environment with positive habits. You start uh, also filtering the kind of people that is in your life and they step away from you just when you start changing because they don't want that uh, they are still in a place where they have a lot of negativity so it doesn't match the energy is not matching you are also changing your vibrations in terms of the emotions that you are emitting so all of those routines are going to create a healthier family, a healthier community, a healthier impact that we can create. And all of that creates a ripple effect that can contribute to long-term well-being and potentially benefit future generations that we are really proud to be in a different uh, world where we see more conscious people, not people that is just divided by a social platform or divided by race, by gender, by language, by anything. Let's stop fighting about things that are so dumb and let's start embracing our own nature, our own wisdom. Let's start recognizing that we were designed to be creators of our own health. So thank you for listening to this uh, episode, to this reflection about habits, about Darwin's influence, about how evolution is teaching us how to really create this new life. And I hope that you are inspired to share this information. And I just ask one thing interact with me give me your comments your suggestions your criticism even and subscribe to my channels and give me a review in any of the platforms that you want to interact in apple podcast in spotify in youtube whatever it is where you listen or watch this information just subscribe to the channel thank you very much and have a wonderful afternoon. We will listen to each other on our next uh, session. Thank you. Bye.